In this video, I'm going to show you how to account for the early retirement of bonds. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to calculate the gain or loss on the early retirement, which is also known as an early extinguishment of debt, and I'm going to show you the journal entry. So first, why would a company even choose to retire its debt early? Well, maybe interest rates have decreased since the time that the company originally issued the bonds. So the company wants to retire those old bonds and then issue new bonds at the lower interest rate. So that's one reason they might do it. There might be other reasons. Now, if this happens, okay, so if the borrower says, you know what, we're going to repurchase those bonds and retire them, okay, then the issuer of the bonds, that's the company that originally issued the bonds, they borrowed the money, they're going to need to zero out any unamortized premium or discount. They're going to need to eliminate the bonds payable because the bonds are no longer payable. They've been retired. They're going to reduce the cash account, assuming they paid cash to re retire these bonds. And then they're, they might have to record a gain or loss. And if they do, it's because the repurchase price, the amount that they pay to retire the bonds, differs from the carrying value, aka book value of the bonds, at the time the bonds are retired. If these two amounts are not the same, then there's going to be a gain or loss. And I will show you how to calculate that. So let's jump into an example. Let's say that we have a company that issues three-year bonds that pay interest semi-annually. Uh, they have a face value of $500,000. There's a stated interest rate of 7%. That's an annual rate. Okay, so we're gonna divide that by two when we go to calculate our semi-annual interest payments, which happen to be $17,500 every six months. And our market rate is 8%. So because the stated rate is lower than the market rate, the bonds are gonna be issued at a discount. Uh, that's $486,895 is what the borrower initially receives for the bonds. I've got other videos on how to calculate the issue price of a bond. So I'm not gonna cover that here. I'm gonna assume you already know how to do that. Now, what we are covering here is what if the issuer of the bonds retires the bonds before they mature? The bonds are set to mature on December 31st, 2026. But let's say on this date here, December 31st, 2024, when the carrying value of the bonds is 490925 Let's say that at this point in time, the issuer says, you know what? We are going to retire these bonds and they pay $485,000 cash uh, to the investors who hold the bonds. And then the question is, how do we account for that? Is there a gain? Is there a loss? What's the journal entry look like? In this example, because they paid $485,000 and the carrying value, aka book value, is actually higher than the amount paid. So they paid less than the book value to retire the bonds. In that case, we are going to have a gain. So you look at the difference between the cash paid to retire the bonds and the book value, aka carrying value, at the time the bonds are retired, if there's a difference, you're gonna have a gain or loss. And you say, well, how do I know if it's a gain or a loss? Well, if the repurchase price is less than the carrying value at that time, you have a gain, which is the situation we have right here, right? We ended up paying less money than the book value to retire the bond. So we say, okay, that's a gain. We got away with paying less money. If you had to pay more than the carrying value to retire the bonds, then the borrower, the issuer of the bonds would record a loss. Now, that's how to calculate the gain or loss. Now, I'm gonna show you a T account here for the discount on bonds payable. Okay, so we originally, originally when the bonds are issued, 486,895 and the, uh, the, excuse me, the face value of the bonds was 500,000. So the difference between those two amounts, their initial discount on the bonds payable, 13,105. Now the company twice has had an interest payment date and they twice have amortized some of the discount. So I've got a little T account here. Here's the initial discount on the bond payable. And then here are the two credits that correspond to this right here. So the unamortized discount on bonds payable, the amount remaining to be amortized when the bonds are retired is 9,074. Why am I telling you about this? Because we are going to have to deal with this when we make our journal entry, okay? So here is our journal entry to record the retirement of the bonds. I showed you how to calculate the gain or loss, but now we're gonna retire the bonds. I said we reduce the bond, or we get rid of the bond payable, right? Because the company no longer owes that 500,000 face value bond payable. We're going to credit cash for 485. We were talking about that. They're paying cash of 485,000 to retire the bonds. And now the discount on bonds payable credited here, that is the unamortized amount. That was going to be amortized over the next few periods, but they retired the bonds early. So we need to amortize it all at once. Get that off the company's balance sheet. Now, 
This amount right here, if you didn't know what it was, if you hadn't calculated the gain or loss, it would just be the plug to make the debits and the credits balance. Okay, so if you don't know how to calculate the gain or loss, don't worry. Now, some of you who are very astute might notice this number and this number are off by a dollar. It's simply due to rounding because when I did this, I did the calculations in Excel and I left out like the cents, like if something was 73 cents or something like that. So it's just a rounding difference. So no need to get all panicked, okay? This is the gain on the early retirement of the debt and it's just off by a dollar there due to rounding, okay? So you can calculate the gain by saying, what's the difference between the purchase, uh, the repurchase price and the carrying value at the time of the retirement, or you can just say, okay, let me just make a journal entry and then see, all right, what do I need here? Oh, I need a credit of 5,926 to make my debits equal my credits. Now, I wanna show you an alternative situation, okay? So that's how to account for that. But what if the issuer of the bonds had instead paid a different amount? What if they had paid 525,000 to retire the bonds? Okay, if they had paid 525,000, now they're paying a lot more than th this amount here. So the, the carrying value at the time of retirement, now they're paying more. Before we assumed they paid less, but now they're paying more than the carrying value. So there's going to be a loss instead of a gain. So I wanna show you that. And I just wanna sh show you the journal entry here. So now we still are debiting the bonds payable to get rid of it. The bonds are no longer payable. They have been retired. That is the same. We are still crediting the discount on bonds payable for 9,074 to get rid of it. So this and this are the same as what happened when there was a gain situation. What is different? The amount of cash that we're crediting. Instead of 485, we are now crediting 525,000. So because of that, to make the debits and credits balance, Instead of having a credit, which is what we had last time, we had a gain, which is a credit, okay? now we have to make a debit of $34,074. And because it's a debit, instead of a credit, it's a losses increase with a debit, whereas gains increase with a credit, we say, okay, we need a loss here, so we know that, we, or we need a debit here, excuse me, so we know that there is a loss on the early extinguishment of these bonds. But again, another way of looking at it is, hey, we had to pay 525,000 and that is more than the carrying value at the bonds at the time we retired them. So if we had to pay more than the carrying value of the bonds to retire them, we are going to record a loss.